Hi everyone, the Lone Wolf here and welcome back to Eve Talk, your weekly look at the market in EVE Online. And I would say the big news, of course, is that CCP has released the next Proving Grounds, the free-for-all destroyer brawl with uh, five participants. Pretty cool in my opinion, something that is going to be very, very accessible as well, especially because it looks like we've been able to grind those uh, filaments for, for quite a while. They've been super cheap in Cheetah so far, so you can very easily get a couple destroyers uh, fit them get some filaments and join in on the action we also have working leaderboards there so you can try to push yourself if you want to and I think what's gonna be really interesting here is not just the accessibility but also the fact that you'll have in my opinion less problems with super blingy fits or anything like that because no matter how much I think you invest into a tick one destroyer if the four or three other participants decide that you're the first target you're gonna lose that ship anyway so I think it's gonna be very interesting and uh, the one thing that I'm not sure about is it's only gonna last for four days but perhaps with this very accessible format CCP wants to first have, have like a smaller test and see what the impact is on the rest of the game the rest of PvP I can imagine that uh, with something like this you're not necessarily gonna go on low sick roams or anything like that so it's gonna be interesting to see how it works out and also what the impact will be on the market I think after uh, it happens I'm curious to see if we'll have basically a double wave on the destroyers if it's gonna be that popular that right now uh, people are just massively buying uh, those destroyers uh, next up let's take a quick look at the new Eden store because I did see a tweet that announced some summer sales and it looks that like they are going uh, Indeed, here's a sale for instance for Abyssal Exotica Bundle, Inner Zone Vanguard, uh, Algos makes sense. This one I think is going to be a very popular ship in the Proving Grounds, um, able to kite, able to deal damage, it's got drones, so I think that that one uh, will uh, see uh, see some sales, so makes sense there. Then we get Attack Commander Bundle, we've got Cerberus Vital Shift Ego Skin, which looks really amazing as well, um, so very diverse uh, set of sales here F almost feels random but it's it's a pretty massive list because we can just keep going uh, neon utopia bundle is on sale uh, phoenix vital shift skin i mean i think those look really really good um, and we've got some more sales going on down here as well so if you're looking for or if you've been looking forward to a sale for a very specific skin definitely take a look at the market it might just be on sale and it might be the right time for you to buy that one that means we get to move on to the market as always we're gonna start with some plex and stuff and that's coming in at three minutes like that and so for plex in jita 2,640,000 disc a bit above 2.6 million buyers a little bit below 2.6 million so i don't think we'll see too much action on the chart we've got a slight slight move upwards in the daily averages and the five day moving average just getting right on top of that 2.5 million for the average price on the chart if we go to the player owned trade hubs we go to just below 2.6 million it's pr pretty much the same as last week just up maybe a few thousand disc and then the buyers are going for probably not that much of a move up no just closer to 2.5 million as well which is really where the price is converging at the moment and if you look at this one year chart it looks pretty nice if you still want to jump in and grab some plex in my opinion um the, the fight on bot has had a pretty big uh, impact on, on all of this, of course, also the increased value of resources, nerfing of Nosic anomalies and the war that's happening at the moment, I think makes for a very interesting mix of downward pressures on uh, Plex prices with probably decently high activity in 0, zero. So it's, it's up to you to decide where you think we'll be going from here. But with some cool announcements and with the end of the summer uh, in about one to two months, I do think this could be a very interesting time to jump in on Plex. For the multiple pilot train certificates, we see that slight upwards pressure as well, definitely showing up in that five day moving average, heading back towards that 1.3 billion ISK. And we're just above that for the first sellers in perimeter tranquility, going up to 1.4 billion in GTA 4.4, and the buyers are coming in at 1.2 billion. So, again, slight upwards pressure. We're not at the very bottom prices anymore, but if we look at this full one year chart, it looks kind of okay. Not as good though as. Uh, 
uh, where we come from for Plex themselves, of course, from 3.5 million. And then this slowdown trend that accelerated in April and in May here, uh, re resulting in our current price range. For the skill extractors, we of course have a chart that mirrors Plex very closely, starts the year above 400 million ISK and ends the year substantially below 300 million ISK as well. Very flat at the moment at what I would consider close to uh, one year low prices as well. Uh, volume wise, we're still doing okay. 292 million for the sellers and 289 million, so super narrow margin here between sellers and buyers. Um, very interesting we are it, it starts to feel to me like we are bottoming out but this could drag along for quite a little bit because we are in this summertime situation and at the moment CCP also reintroduced the skilling spree so you get a couple NPCs get some extra skill points uh, all of this could put some pressure on the demand for skill extractors and of course skill injectors as a result as well for the large skill injectors we are seeing that confirmed basically although there could definitely be other factors at play as well but we have a substantial breakdown well below 700 million isk we started the year at almost 900 million isk so this is a substantial pullback that we're seeing here uh, which also means that my first purchases have been too early i already have a small skill injector think about it um, i'm not sure what the price anymore and one large skill injector as well uh, so right now sellers are coming in at 688 million isk so well below 700 million and buyers are at 658 pretty much um Still a bit of a margin, still more room to go even lower. And so this, this is really something that the market does. You can see here in May, we went to what looked like a promising one year low point. We probably hit close to 700 million on the buyers to get these average prices. And the market really hesitated to go through that. But once we breach 700 million, especially on the seller side, one, once they are forced to go below, below that price, competition comes in very quickly and drives the price down to uh, well, new uh, lows, 688 million all of a sudden. Average price, really a, a pretty substantial breakdown right here. This is not good news if you're looking for uh, confirmation that we may be reaching a bottom uh, on Plex or something like that. You really have to decide that this is purely due to lower demand for skill points because uh, Plex have been flat in, in the same period that this has broken down to a new low point. Next up, we have the small skill injectors. They, of course, follow suit. And there's again a break at 140 million. The real question is, will we be able to stop there? We start here at 180. So again, pretty massive pullback. We went below 150 and at probably the 145 mark is where the market kept hesitating. But finally, about a week or so ago, we were playing with those lows again. And this time the market had to break down. 140 million for the sellers, 131 million for the buyers. I think I bought my small skill injector for like 149 or 144 or something like that just below um, those prices so right now you can buy even cheaper for small skill injectors really starting to be the question do I want to double down or do I uh, just want to invest in other things we'll see I sold my take two ships so I'm basically ready for more trades after that, we have the uh, daily alpha injectors that are ooh, surprises. I'm surprised by this as well. Last week, we, it looked like we were hesitating and perhaps going back down. And while the uh, large skill injectors, small skill injectors, stuff that's used by the entire player base and also the Omega clones uh, are going down in price, alpha uh, injectors are going back up to more than 40 million isk 41 million almost for the sellers and 35 million for the buyers so the right gamble in may when plex also had their big pullback um large skill injectors had their big pullback was actually daily alpha injectors we went as low as 30 million and you're already selling them for above 40 million isk not bad very impressive for these daily alpha injectors to maintain that price range and i I'm gonna read this as a sign that we have lots of trials in EVE Online that are sticking around a little bit more, perhaps due to the real life circumstance, of course, lots of people are basically forced to stay at home at this point. That may just be enough motivation to say, you know what, I'm gonna grind out 40 million, which is far more doable, of course, than like a billion isk for a, for a full skill injector or uh, what, uh, 1.5, 1.3 billion for a full month of Omega. But these daily alpha injectors are nice goals that you can set for yourself and it looks to me like they're pretty popular at the moment 
and then finally we've got the hyper cores that are well flat and actually a little bit of downward pressure at the at the tail end here above 280,000 isk uh, 270 in fact for the first few sellers 284 most in Jita and then 250,000 for the buyers just again showing that the uh, hypernet really at the moment is not really uh, a bonanza or, or like a massive problem uh, in EVE Online if you have problems with this kind of gambling mechanic uh, it feels like it is basically uh, you know something that is being used here in Jita. You can see that in Jita local, Hypernet offers are being used, but it's very niche usage uh, for like very big items and specific raffles and things like that. So I feel like uh, a lot of those worries turned out to not be too justified and uh, well, it's doing, I think, what CCP wants it to do as well. Next up, we have the mineral market that's coming in at 11 minutes. And there we go and you may already have seen from the ticker but uh, Tritanium doing really well so we have a pull up from 7 isk we went a little bit below that uh, but now we had a bit of a move in volumes as well and sellers in Jita are going for 8.2 isk pretty much uh, some volumes are starting to come in we've got a, a nice almost a full page in the last 24 hours here bars are still at 7 isk so this is definitely a big uh, margin that has opened up but it also shows that there is very strong demand at the moment probably due to the war in Nelsic and well uh, even prices of 7 isk for Tritanium are now seen as an opportunity to grab some cheap stuff which is really good I think for miners it shows uh, signs that for now at least the value of effort in EVE Online it's sticking uh, Tritanium at 7 ISK is like even historically speaking a pretty damn good price and the fact that we now just jump up to 8 ISK on just purchasing uh, is uh, pretty impressive in my opinion so Pyrite uh, no Tritanium excuse me is in a really good spot if you have some reserves um, maybe also compressed Feldspar things like that there could be some increased demand for that right now and you could get that premium price of over 8 ISK. Let's see if some of the others are following suit. Well, Pyrite is stemming the bleeding. We went back to like 6.5 or something like that on the chart. One, two, and then a third leg down. At least we are stopping at the tail end. It's 6.37 for the sellers and 6.02 for the buyers. Well, which is still up quite a bit from where we started off last year. And Pyrite, not so much a bottleneck or a problem. Uh, mineral, uh, just like Isogen, kind of the minerals that have been suffering the most from the resource bonanza i would personally not be surprised if there's still stocks out there for pyrite and isogen just waiting to be sold at better prices which from time to time is going to crash uh, them down as well after that we've got Mixlon with Tritanium up, let's see what that one is doing. One is trying to hold on to a price of above 90 ISK, which is definitely not bad. We're talking almost 93 ISK for the sellers, 83.8 ISK for the buyers. That is super expensive Mixlon and just like in the last couple of weeks, focus on sources of Mixlon if you are going out there to mine. Tritanium at the moment is also looking pretty good of course, but um, something different here of course, you get the volume spike that drove the price price back up you can expect supplies to, cr um, to to crush this price back towards 7 isk for Mexilon we're doing a lot better here in a more substantial way on normal volumes we're at around 90 isk which is a great great price so this really ought to still be your focus when it comes to mining after that we get Isogen flat around that 25 isk mark also pretty good gain on a one year chart uh, but we're not moving anywhere from there just below 25 isk for the sellers 22.71 for the buyers uh, feels like it's just like with Pyrite trying to hold on to its value we'll see if it uh, manages to do that or not. After that we had Noxium that uh, did go up in price uh, in, in like one, two, three steps as well. Went to almost 600 disc on a single day. Had that pull pullback from there but we are stopping that pullback uh, close to the previous one year high point. So we're still in a great place. 480 disc for the sellers, 431 for the buyers. Uh, 500 disc is definitely close to the high end here. So 
and 480 in fact as well is uh, yeah, still at that high point range if you consider the last peak here to be part of the current movement so Noxium also doing really well um, and uh, there seems to be well increased demand or just a, a willingness to pay more ISK for Noxium at the moment because the volumes are not doing anything too crazy this also looks like something that may just be um, part of the new normal as long as the war is going on people will be willing to pay almost 500 isk for noxium just like they're willing to pay almost 90 isk for mixalon really two big winners at the moment of uh, probably what's happening in nosec combined with the resource crunch from ccp after that, we have the Zydrine market that uh, try to go back to a thousand disc and it just cannot maintain that price. You've got a big volume as well. So Zydrine is really in high demand back up to 1330 isk that is a crazy good price almost 1100 disk as well for the buyers and we started the year at 500 disk um, also a lot of these gains have been just lately uh, a lot later than than what we see in in like tritanium for instance if we go over here you get this big spike here in april um, so a bit of a basically a late bloomer but percentage wise uh, definitely a massive winner if you still happen to have some Zydrine stocks uh, left over from like the first ha half of uh, or, or the second half of last year about first half of this year uh, this year's one year chart um, you know you're in a golden position to be selling them at double and more of the price after that we have the megasite market which to my surprise is doing something differently it's struggling to really break out although we have a gain from around 400 disc to 500 disc over this one year period it's really not moving in the same way as side right i'm really surprised by that because historically speaking before the resource bonanza megasite used to be worth more than side run it should be uh, more difficult to get big volumes of megasite it should see less usage than side run as well uh, but overall, it used to be competitive, close to Zydrine, but more expensive. 523 is for the sellers and 455 for the buyers. It's just not that hot at the moment. Kind of weird that Zydrine is such a winner, almost triple the price. And then Megaside is struggling to gain 25% uh, in, this, uh, in this current situation. And then finally, we have the Morphite market that is holding steady at its current gains. This is really not a bad thing, although it's already a year ago that we broke out from like less than 10,000 disc. Um, being able to ask almost 15,000 disc for Morphite and the buyers coming in at 13,750 is a pretty damn good price. Uh, purchase opportunities for Morphite, in my opinion, below 10,000 disc. So this is still 50% above that. Way too early, in my opinion to make uh, to be making big moves on morphite it's all about production because the demand and the destruction seems to be there for the mineral market next up the pi market coming in at 18 minutes like that and let's see here because of course if uh, some markets are gaining lots of risk others tend to lose it and let's see what's happening in the pr market broadcast nodes are working on their well comeback you could say that uh, or at least they're pulling away from these bottoms you get a couple of volume spikes here uh, driving the price up from 1.75 billion to probably the 1.9 1.8 range 2 million for the sellers and yeah 1.85 so that's definitely like a 1.9 average uh, or more uh, for broadcast notes a bit of a comeback we're not at the average prices yet so so far investors are very careful not to spook the market and to drive us into stratos uh, stratospheric price or anything like that but it is definitely a nice comeback um, early july late june was obviously the time for bargain prices um, i got a couple of these advanced pi materials i hope you did as well uh, just don't go too crazy in the volumes that is always my recommendation recommendation of course construction blocks last week uh, was doing okay as well try to get back to above 10,000 this guy is actually trying to hold on to that as well a couple of sellers coming in at 9562 very close to the buyers of so super aggressive but most sellers are trying almost 11,000 disc at 10,800 so this is still not a great price but at least it's not one year low points 8,000 disc and prices like that pretty interesting comeback here as well for construction blocks consumer electronics had the same thing went up to 12,000 disc which put it almost at its 
normal average price i would say 12.5k normal average a bit of a pullback there but we're trying to stay above 11,000 disc on the average price 11,100 to 11,400 for the sellers 11,100 for the buyers as well showing a little bit of increased interest at least in some of these pi materials Last week though, we saw that while some of them were winning, the fuel related PI materials, which is what I focus on for production, are not doing so well. And unfortunately, that seems to be confirmed. Here is the coolant chart staying well below 10,000 disc. Try to come back a little bit, but is already under pressure again. On more volumes, that should mean just more dumping. 9,500 disc for the sellers, 8,800 disc for the buyers. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening with prices going to well below 9,000 disc. Any increase in price is apparently seen as an opportunity by producers and we're oversupplying massively already. Now, if uh, you look at this chart and then you look at this chart, this is very reminiscent of where we were about a month ago. So looking for these bargain prices in these refined PI materials related to fuels, I think it makes a lot of sense. For me personally, of course, I produce the stuff, so I'm just going to hoard it and not bring it to the market right now. Cryoprotectant solutions are able to hold on to that margin. I'm really curious to see when we'll drop back to 100,000 disc, as for the moment we don't have any more implants announced, but we do, uh, I think, expect them to come at some point. Uh, right now we're talking 122,000 for the sellers, that's still quite okay, and 106 for the buyers, so well above 100,000 disc for the average price. You're still paying that slight premium for cryoprotectant solutions at the moment, but it is definitely under pressure right now back to a more normal time period for this one once ccp announces a uh, like a new set of implants i mean this could still take a very long time but everyone i think is expecting that for the vorton projector at some point then of course purchases at bottom prices when the opportunity is right uh, will make you quite a bit of risk potentially after that, we've got enriched uranium tied to fuels, showing that this is indeed not a very good time. We have average price that sometimes reach 9,000 isk as well. Volumes here should be just more dumping, unfortunately. 10,720 for the sellers, 9,600 for the buyers. Buying below 10,000 isk, if you look at this full one-year chart, is not a bad plan, in my opinion. So we are definitely in this situation where uh, fuel rate PI materials are struggling and uh, who knows? of course are they building a bottom let's hope so integrity response drones seem to be doing so here we also have uh, an increase in price on some volumes getting back towards that 2 million range which is still not the average price and some new supply is putting pressure back on around 1.9 million for the sellers 1.9 million for the buyers as well though so that has gone up competition is here to purchase these cheaper advanced pi materials so we're well away from that bottom range of 1.6 million a bit of a, a recovery but not to the average prices just yet mechanical parts tied to fuels did well to try and, and defend that 10,000 disc range but you can see at the tail end to no avail tied to fuel so we're struggling here 10,500 for the sellers they're still trying to get that decent price but the buyers are dropping off to 9,200 and the fact that we get these average prices well below 10,000 disc means that there's still a lot a lot of supply that's just going straight to those buyers uh, so that's putting pressure on the price of course Nanites uh, away from its bottom of less than 5,000 disc is still around the average if you look at where we started off last year as well. 6,500 for the sellers, 5,500 for the buyers. A um, bit too late to buy, not the best time to sell. I would be hoarding them if I'm producing them, but I would not be investing in ISK uh, at, uh, at the moment either. Nano factories, one of the exceptions in advanced PI materials, still just basically uh, floating around at that bottom price price below 900,000 is normal price about a million and it is less than 900,000 for the sellers and 860,000 for the buyers still very cheap organic mortar applicators also not doing well and this one I mean this is where uh, right here in April looks like 900,000 is that looks great we had several opportunities to buy at that and then we just broke down again when below that 800,000 is okay looks like a nice one year low point let's invest in that and then about a month later we just 
break through that barrier again we play with 750,000 on a couple of days and now the market is trying to decide what to do uh, sellers coming in above 800,000 again buyers just below that so there is some competition here but it is of course like 20% below the normal price so um, you know this is this is people deciding on which positions to take again if you then look at broadcast notes this could be the right time to be making your moves looking for those cheapest buy orders and trying to grab some of the cheapest uh, available advanced PI materials recursing recursive computing model does seem to be confirming that as well went to 1.25 twice as the bottom price and is now getting back to that 1.5 million which looks like the yearly average but keep in mind we we come from a pretty bad year for pi here um and this is also doing so on a lack of supply look at that one seller let's see if there's more stuff happening in the player on trader yeah all right that makes more sense uh 1.5 million for the sellers 1.5 million for the buyers a bit of competition in the tranquility trading tower uh not too much supply is basically uh, allowing this this price to go back to a normal more normal range robotics tied to fuels try to get back to 90,000 disc which is still not great 100,000 is the normal average for robotics and then to no avail so we get a bit of purchasing that happened right here makes sense one year low point less than 85,000 on the chart feels like it's a good opportunity so we jump up to 90,000 and then supply just takes over again and we are back down 87,000 for the sellers 83 430 for the buyers so you're buying well below 85,000 disc right now um Another difficult choice, in my opinion, considering uh, the last year in PI. But just like with Plex and things like that, you've got some telltale signs that, uh, you know, this summer may be uh, the, the bottom for some of these goods. I can't guarantee it though. Self harmonizing power course, bottom 1.5, once twice again a bit of volume increase driving the price back up away from that bottom but staying very careful 1.7 million for the sellers a bit below that for the buyers then we have the sterile conduits very same pattern of course two bottoms at around 900,000 disc and we're back well above 1 million for the average prices 1.1 million for the sellers almost 1.1 million for the buyers as well showing there is increased interest and demand in at least a, a, a good portion of the advanced pi materials yukomi superconductors is staying at its current range here um, definitely up for the one year chart we don't see that too often 77,000 for the sellers 70,000 for the buyers and then finally we get the Whitware mainframes that was uh, even worse than which one was it that had several legs down can't really I think yeah this one organic motor applicators this one went to less than 2 million less than 1.8 million less than 1.5 million yeah this is this is massive actually this is a real really a uh, very pronounced one your low point below 1.5 million for it where mainframes is kind of crazy especially if you've been playing long enough to remember the introduction of structures in eve online with where mainframes have always been like the major bottleneck the ones that jumped up 100 200 percent and even more uh, on on their peak uh, so this is this really does feel like something you, you should have taken advantage of and uh, some people definitely did. We jumped right back to almost 1.8 million on volumes for 3-4 days. Uh, this is investors just taking advantage of that opportunity and buying uh, this, um, this, this, this really uh, very, very low price point. Right now, 1.8 million for the sellers, almost 1.8 million for the first buyer. So we do have some aggressive buying that should, should keep the price in check for now. But this is um, a very, very nice bottom. Uh, the people that bought here, I think, have a very good deal on their hands. So next, advanced movements. Just let me drink for a moment. Advanced boom at 28.45. Like that. And uh, let's take a look here. We'll, we'll go in order again. But uh, I did add the, uh, the type of ships that are being produced uh, by these uh, carbonites and meta materials. So we get crystalline carbonites uh, tied to the Galente ship line. And here we get a bit of a breakdown. So apparently take two Galente ships, not that in the meta at the moment. Going back down to 130 on average price, 143 for the sellers, 124 for the buyers. 
clearly showing a lack of demand in crystalline carbonite right now perhaps even an opportunity to jump in if at some point you expect the galente ship lines to make a comeback stuff like the ishtar from time to time i think they will uh, field fleets of that and uh, this should also explain why the ishtar went down in price so much there's just not that much action around it at the moment fermionic condensate is one of these other uh, advanced move materials that is went back to 90k is, is pulling back a little bit from that but basically just below average I would say at uh, 89,000 for the sellers 78,000 for the buyers and very different picture here not that much supply compared to the number of buy orders able to command well a decently good price from uh, fernite carbide tied to minmatar ships had this big jump of course as the Imperium is well known to fly and need a lot of munins as a result, we went up to 200 isk almost for Fernite Carbide from a bottom range of 125 as well. I mean, if this was the trade that you've made, you are very, very happy. Right now, though, we have a settling down. I think the meta is shifting. They don't always want to fly the very best ship, especially when uh, or the what's for them the best meta because it becomes ridiculously expensive at some point of course and switching to other types will inevitably be part of the uh, economy when it comes to, uh, to to massive warfare like what's happening at the moment uh, back down to less than 150 for the sellers 128 for the buyers basically right back on its average nice little bubble you could say though Ferrogel is holding on to 40k which is not good if you look at where we started off last year but it's, it's basically its current range we have to accept that if you have breakdowns to less than 35,000 you can probably try to pick some up but it feels very risky of course if you look at this one year chart next up we've got fuller rights that is still trying to stay above a thousand disc how long will that last who knows a thousand discs actually it's normal price so this one had a very good last couple of months still almost 1100 for the sellers but buyers at 923 and so here supply is steady but uh, demand seems to be decreasing a little bit causing this pullback in the price hypersynaptic fibers next is well again slightly below average pulling back at the tail end with increased volume so here i'm expecting a bit more supply 11600 for the sellers and a big gap again 9600 with the buyers it feels like it's decently balanced and thus you get this price that's coming down from its normal average after that we get nano transistors actually a pi material that's going up in price well above 6000 is all of a sudden so it does look pretty good for the sellers 6400 for the first seller buyers at 5760 and a lack of supply we really have this mixed picture right sometimes we've got bottom prices on too much supply no demand and here we actually have above average prices pretty good prices on next to no supply so uh, it's not a uniform situation Non-linear metamaterials tied to the Kaldari ship lines doing okay, getting back up there to 25,000 disc and staying there I think just below that 24,780 for the first seller and 23,720 for the buyers is uh, definitely a decent average price apparently for Kaldari ship production. Phenolic composites still struggling away from the bottom uh, but uh, still not doing too well. 1900 for the sellers, 1800 for the buyers bit more demand here so we're away from that that terrible situation but it, it's not great photonic metamaterials slightly up so that's a different picture crystalline carbonite crashing to one year low points and then our photonic metamaterials pulling away from that bad price around 15,000 disc 17,000 for the sellers 15,000 for the buyers though this is a big gamble to take do you think that this is the trend that we actually do need more tech 2 ships in general and so these metamaterials will continue to go up then crystalline carbonite seems to be a good purchase right now or do you think that those buyers will stay at those really bottom prices and then this could get under pressure very quickly and then crystalline carbonite could be in trouble for the foreseeable future that's basically uh, so far the the most pronounced potential buy opportunity and the thinking that i would do when it comes to deciding whether or not i should buy some uh, of those carbonite uh, carbonites yeah then plasmonic metamaterials minmatar again went up to 50,000 disc double the price uh, very nice again uh, if you'd been able to take advantage of this trade but right now that seems to be slowing down back down to 22,000 for the sellers 20,000 for the buyers uh, back on a normal range we would say 
Ceramic fibers are not doing too well. Trying to get back to that 400 isk range for 18 for the sellers and 353 for the buyers. Very big margin despite the fact that we have decent supplies, I would say. So here, uh, that's interesting. If you can buy right now and sell right now, I think you're actually makes it, making some ISK and there's not a lot of goods that stay in that situation. So is there a lot of selling happening in the Tranquility Trading Tower? No, not being dominated by that one. Very interesting uh, to see ceramic fibers at such a big spread. Terrors Metamaterials for Amar, also not that great, although a nice pullback from the bottom as well, from 18,000 ISK to 22,500. Right now, 21,130 for the sellers, 20,160 for the buyers. A little bit of a, a lack of demand, I would say. Titanium Carbide for Kaldari, slightly below average again. And then Tungsten Carbide for Amar, actually crashing back down. To, uh, toward that 175 if we go below that that's very dangerous 184 for the sellers 173 for the buyers they want to it's not that many anymore and we get below 170 that's where I do think purchasing might start to become interesting so a little bit too early to say that yeah we should be buying those that are under pressure uh, but you know I would definitely understand if you want to risk those investments in some of these at this point especially these carbides for uh, Amar and uh, Galente they do look like they are selling uh, at really low prices right now let's see if there's an impact on the tech 2 ship markets 3610 and this this should mean basically stabilization i'm not expecting too much honestly this week perhaps also some uh some buy opportunities again so here we have the basilisk pretty decent wavy behavior bottom price 190 180 probably 185 or something like that and right now we are under pressure if i'm not mistaken i'm still trying to grab one at like 175 million uh being very aggressive here but we have we're at 211 million for the sellers and 186 million for the buyers and i think i'm right here this is probably gonna be my buy order for the basilisk so you get a bit of pressure that's building up if it has enough momentum perhaps my buy order could still trigger that would be very good news of course uh, right now though probably just a touch too early to jump in Next up here we get the Cerberus flat above 230 million, which is actually a normal average price I would say for the Cerberus. Uh, 238 for most sellers, buyers coming in at 212. Again, not the one where you want to sell. This is not the potential best price, but way too early to buy as well. The Guardian next continuing to float just above 200 million is it depends on where the buyers are at so 204 million for the sellers 188 million for the buyers well buying below 190 and then selling for a 230 to 50 or up range is not that bad uh, if you don't have a Guardian ready for sale that you bought at an even better time it could be worth it uh, to, to risk a buy order below 190. After that, we've got the Hound. This is, of course, where I did make my trades. You've got this bottom price. We went to less than 25 million. I think I bought for like 22 million or 21. And then we jumped up to 35 million. You, of course, have a pretty drastic pullback from that. But what's interesting is that we're still at 33 million for the sellers, 27 million for the buyers. So you still have a nice opportunity to sell at like a 50% profit. If, together with me, you bought at around 22 million ISK. Um, some volatility, uh, still bombers tend to be uh, on the front line for that. The Ikiters had to keep an eye on some of these Triclavian ships flat at 400 million ISK, 405 for the sellers, 380 for the buyers. Uh, still too new and a little bit too expensive, I think, to, so, to show some real volatility. Uh, what could be more interesting is the Ishtar and unfortunately we're, they're kind of confirming that we're too late. When we reached close to 200 million ISK, that was the time to buy those Ishtars. We are going back up on some volume buying as well, so probably either investors or Nalsic that decided this is the right time to buy a couple Ishtar fleets driving the price back up to a more normal range 230 for the sellers to 110 million for the buyers that is definitely still on the cheap side but not super cheap anymore 
Next up here we get the Manticore uh, that also jumped back up to 30 million isk. So I had a trade here, not as good as the Hound, but it was definitely worth it. And we again have a pullback. Obviously that happens at some point, but look at that. We're still trying to get back up there. Almost 30 million for the sellers, 26 million for the buyers. So this again, you can still sell if you bought for like 25 and below. Uh, you're a little bit too late, but you can still try to do so for buying. This does not seem to be the week so far. The Munin uh, crashes back down, but where are those buyers? Uh, this could potentially create an opportunity. Of course, we get this massive spike up to 350 million, which usually does create a bit of an industry response. And if they overshoot, you do end up with a nice opportunity. We're not at one year low prices just yet, but let's see if we have enough momentum. 223 million for the sellers, less than 200 million for the buyers. Let's take a look at that on the chart. That's right here. That is not bad. Honestly, if you want that Munin gamble, if you think the war will be become even more hot and perhaps a certain system that will need to be defended by the Imperium or something like that is going to bring in some Munin destruction, then this could be the right time to jump in and try to grab one or two at uh, less than 200 million that would be a very good deal if you could sell at 350 of course but there's no guarantee of a repeat of course that's that's difficult uh, to say but this feels like uh, they may have overshot a little bit in production and supply Next up, we get the Nemesis. Bottom prices, 22 million. I think even 21 was the uh, was something that you could have bought at. Went up to 30 million. We are in that pullback phase again. 28 million almost for the sellers. 24 million for the buyers. Uh, a little bit too late to sell. Definitely too early to buy. The Oneros continues to go down these very, very low price ranges. Um, 170 million for the sellers, 154 for the buyers. Um, you know, if you don't have any, it does make sense to buy at least one Oneros at these cheap prices. Potential upswing is 200 million and more um, on some logistics needs. Eventually, the Oneros does get its turn as well. So it's a gamble because the volumes are not great. I would never recommend more than one ship, but if you don't have one these are really low prices buy on the Nero's as close to 150 as possible you've got that 25% upswing potential pretty easily um, it, it makes sense for at least one of them then we have some uh, some battleships that I'm adding in here maybe to get a bit of a feel of the, of the general vibe in tech 2 uh, the, the larger the ship the more goods that need to be produced and so here we, we're basically stable at average slightly above Above average, no, probably just around average, honestly. 1.19 uh, billion for the sellers and 1.1 billion for the buyers. So nothing too special on the Panther. What does uh, become noticeable is that the volumes are going down and are pretty low at the moment. For the purifier, back into the more volatile stuff. Here's a, a nice stealth bomber as well. I think purchase opportunities 23, 24 million pretty easily actually, not that long ago. And then we jumped up to almost 40 million isk on a couple of days. We're again in that pullback phase from those highs. Still 30.4 million for the sellers, 26 million for the buyers. So here again, a little bit too late to sell and definitely too early to buy. But if it has more momentum, it could definitely uh, happen again. Scimitar went uh, up nicely as well, up to 350 million almost from a bottom of less than 200 million is, which is actually pretty close to one year low point here. So that was a crazy time for the Scimitar. Same situation as the Stell Bombers basically. 230 million for the sellers, 220 for the buyers, still a bit too early. After that, we get the Widow that yeah, feels slightly above average volumes, not doing that great either. 1.2 billion for the sellers, a bit above 1 billion for the buyers. And then finally, we get the Zealot uh, that, ooh, that's an interesting crash as well. We went up to 300 million isk. Zealot is, I think, something that's used in um, Nalsec, I think Providence also uses them. Obviously, a Mars ships are popular there, but this is a very, very sharp pullback to a one year low point 200 million. Sellers are coming in at 207, buyers at 194. Not that many buyers here. Amount of ships, it's still reasonable. And in the last 24 hours, we still have some competition here. Now, this would be 
my number one um, for uh, for trying to buy something drab a zealot well below 200 million 195 197 something like that should definitely be possible and if you look at the upside potential 250 very easily 280 if you're a little bit lucky uh, i would say that is not a bad deal right now this one feels like it's it's basically overshot in production and and volumes are just gone so nobody is looking at that zealot right now um yeah buy one i don't think we're gonna regret it if we try it after that we have our tick three ships coming in at 44 44 i'm gonna do like that like that and uh, yeah let's take a look last week i basically felt like we were confirming that the destroyers were back in a healthy place uh the confessor stabilizing just above 40 million on average 42.5 million for the sellers 36 million for the buyers healthy margin supply wise nothing too crazy uh five sellers in the last 24 hours um, 61 here is a bit more but 44 million is also a pretty damn good price so this feels normal for a 40 million average with decent volumes next up here we've got the hecate that's pulling up a little bit from 40 million as well let's take a look at what's happening here 44 million for the sellers 38 million for the buyers so definitely a slight premium of a couple million over the confessor but look at the situation as well um half a page so the supply is here in the last 24 hours putting that pressure on 60 here uh, is probably going to just have that same pattern if everything works out normally and we don't see anything strange here by next week's lower volumes but bring that price back 42 43 ish um, and then we could just stabilize there again still makes complete sense to me um, slightly better price for the Hegate on perhaps a little bit more demand then we have the jackdaw that also went back down to 40 million so that spike has been absorbed successfully without overshooting unfortunately if you're looking for investments and we're basically uh, staying above that impressive as well actually 43.5 million 39.5 million much narrower margin it is i think the most popular uh, tactical destroyer as well volumes up a little bit here and then 50 of these um but on the other hand what's coming in the last 24 hours is in line with a normal price as well so this this feels like it's pretty regular right now and we'll have to wait for opportunities and then the Zvepel has stabilized below 40 million is you can expect that of course for the least popular of these tactical destroyers but if you bought together with me here at like 34 33 million you can still try to sell them for almost 40 million and then 34.6 as well for the buyers and as a result supply is just a couple of sell orders 10 ships in the last 24 hours for the worst price this makes complete sense and now we have to basically wait for um, something to move in this market to try and find the right opportunities right now though everything just feels in line and uh, i would personally wait for like an overproduction or something like that to happen uh, to get a, a pronounced buy opportunity it could have happened here in the jackdaw if they had overproduced enough we would have gone through that 40 million barrier and then look out below on any competition as uh, buyers forced down to like 35 34 million range that would be a nice opportunity it just didn't materialize we'll have to wait for that in the upcoming weeks i think and then we have our cruisers here's the legion going back down to bottom prices so that increase in price did not last long 135 million for the sellers 116 million for the buyers very very low if you still don't have a cheap legion for uh, for the opportunity if you want to gamble on that in the cruiser markets this definitely feels like the time to do so the low key is also showing signs of pressure again hitting 150 on the average price 161 for the sellers 140 7 million for the buyers if you don't have a low key below 150 yet this is again your opportunity to buy one and then we have the proteus flat not at bottom prices so that's a no for me although you're buying below 130 million so you could say that this is still a buy opportunity uh, i don't like it personally myself and then the tango is also holding on decently well 172 million for the sellers 151 for the buyers it's still not great um but keep one thing in mind of course the cruiser market is not like the destroyer market this is not a situation where the legion is going to uh one year low points because it is 
massively oversupplied or anything like that we're talking five sale orders in the last couple of days uh no in the lot yeah last 48 hours apparently um just 20 to 30 ships and if you buy 40 of them <laughs> you're driving the price back up uh substantially it's it's really a very difficult margin uh market um feels like a little bit of a gamble although of course buying below 120 million for a legion that's gotta be good at some point and and look at when it happens when someone does try to manipulate the market 160 180 190 is possible as well so it does make sense to have one ship ready at these bottom prices but don't go crazy with those volumes because it's going to be very difficult to get rid of them in my opinion yeah the tech tree ship market that lovely difference between what in my opinion is a healthy good market with decent uh, supply and demand of the destroyers and then that that crazy uh, cruiser market where you've got such low volumes that everything is always ripe for uh, for manipulation uh, it's pretty interesting i like this segment uh, personally and i always look forward to that which leaves us to our extra product this week we're going back to some faction cruisers we'll see what we can spot there coming in at 50 20. like that which means we gotta go to ships cruisers faction cruisers uh we'll start with the pirate factions uh here is the ashimu uh up a little bit in price but 60 million still makes it a very affordable ship 63 million for the sellers 55 million for the buyers might just be you know i i, I bought mine i think around here when it was definitely below 60 million isk um and uh, might just be the uh, the the uh, content creator effect here I, I show that it it is actually a really cheap ship that is not great at what it does but for 60 million isk you can make that into an exploration ship uh, in pvp it will have its uses as well and so um it's I love the look of the hull as well so bringing that to the forefront i think makes sense and 60 million for a, a pirate faction cruiser is actually really cheap as we'll normally see in just a moment so it's back right on its average price here nothing too crazy and uh, it is a cheap ship because it's not that great but you can make it work i think for a lot of things compare that to the cinnabal that's going for more than double the price and is actually a little bit below average i would say at the moment uh, 140 million for the sellers 123 million for the buyers a bit of a lack of supply and despite that we don't have a breakout in prices that's interesting cinnabal uh, very very powerful ship 555 slot layout is something that i always remember about this one definitely also something you can turn into a um an exploration cruiser or something like that although it's also again gonna suffer against the sasha because of the tracking disruption decently normal price i'm gonna say the Ortress, ooh, that's a serious pullback from a very strong couple of months. Went up to 230 million. Yeah, compare that to an Ashimo of 60 million. That is very expensive, of course, and is now basically settling down at 194 million for the sellers, less than 180 million for the buyers. I would say if you, I, I have that Explore Trust, which is a super capable ship as well, of course. Missile, super strong shield tank, has some drones in it, if I'm not mistaken kind of sure of that let's take a quick look and see if we can confirm this yep it's got uh, the small drone capacity nothing extra there but it helps a lot uh, especially in exploration and i call it the explore trust uh, it's uh, it's a very very good ship you're also paying the price for that it is like three times as expensive as an ashimu after that we've got the phantasm that's actually uh, a little bit less popular but right now it's above average for the price bit of pressure at the tail end going for around 100 million isk for the sellers 90 million for the buyers um, which is basically a better ashimu uh, so this could be interesting perhaps i should try to buy a phantasm below 100 million and see what we can do with that one after that we get the stradios stable for alpha clones i think when they eventually get there although they can't use the cloaking feature it just has that bonuses for exploration that's really good it's coming from a high point of 200 million isk as well is basically settling back down nicely 168 million for the sellers 156 million for the buyers again showing that big difference in uh, the meta ships the specific bonus ships the uh, good uh, or best uh, weapon system ships that you 
you're just paying that price for them. Uh, so making something cheaper work can be worth it uh, from time to time as well. So Stradios done in price actually well below average but uh, still kind of expensive again compared to what I used last week. Then we have the Gila bottom prices which is part of the reason why I bought a Testudo Gila as well. Uh, some people why am I pronouncing it like that? Uh, it was actually a video from CCP I think where people went Gila, Gaila, how do you pronounce it? Um, I think they settled on uh, not really pronouncing the, the G uh, or J at, at the front, G it is, uh, and just saying Gila. Uh, I think that was what uh, what's meant uh, to be uh, what it's meant to be pronounced. That uh, if you don't have this, I mean, this ship, number one in the abyss for the cruisers, one of the best PVE cruisers, crazy tank, uh, crazy drones, missiles. It's just really, really good. So if you don't have one, uh, definitely consider buying one now. 159 million for the sellers, 144 million for the buyers, still more than twice as expensive as an Ashimu, but you are getting basically one of the best possible hulls you can for this um, for this uh, uh, segment. I mean, it competes with Tech 2 Cruisers, it's just that good. And then finally, we've got the Vigilant, that's more niche, I think. Uh, oh, I could try it at some point as well uh, for some exploration. Going back down in the last couple of days, 260 million, a bit below its average actually. Uh, but sellers are still at 178, and it's a lack of demand. 160 million for the uh, first buyer. You could almost gamble on this as an investment. Try to grab one as close to 160 million as possible, and then hope to sell it at the better time. Uh, that is a possibility as well. So these pirate faction ships actually quite a bit of pressure, nothing too crazy in those um, and I personally love them, uh, especially that uh, that healer. Of that we get the navy faction ships which actually also now has the Stormbringer. That is interesting uh, when as low as 100 million ISK and is now flat on the curve. 136 million for the sellers, 121 million for the buyers. Reasonable in range of the other faction cruisers so uh, the availability of these ships is obviously uh, solved uh, started its life at like 170 750 million isk that was way too expensive but yeah this feels like the stormbringer has been brought in line with what you would expect Augur Navy issue, uh, well, you know, it's not as good a combat ship, this one, so uh, actually pretty damn cheap, going for less than 60 million isk, despite the fact that it's a little bit above average, 59 million for the sellers, 48 million for the buyers, then something that I think is going to be a bit more, ex oh no, ooh, that's okay, I, I thought that the Stormbringer was going to be in line with the others, but no, uh, these uh, Navy faction cruisers seem to be cheaper, uh, by quite a bit and then the Stormbringer is basically in line with the pirate faction ship at this point. Caracal Navy issue slightly above average but nothing too crazy either. 56 million and 49 million for the buyers. Honestly if you have to choose between this and an Ashimu for exploration definitely grab that Caracal Navy issue for about the same price. Uh, it's gonna get the job done even better. Execor Navy issue so this is where, uh, unfortunately, the the good old uh, faction warfare where LP was gotten from PvE mostly and gave us a predictable market, it's just gone. So the Executor Navy issue just spiked up to 90 million, is recovering back down towards 70 million, yeah, 74 for the sellers, 65 for the buyers, but this means that we now have Amar above average, Kaldari above average, Galente above average, um, Omen, yeah, actually just spiking up. Omen Navy issue just doing a spike from 50 million and 56 million, nothing too crazy, but above average again. Osprey Navy issue, we'll just go through this a little bit more quickly now, but yeah, going for just below 60 million, starts here at 40 million, so this definitely looks above average as well. Uh, also pretty interesting for uh, exploration, by the way. I like this ship and its look. Uh, side fleet issue, <laughs> Min Matar, 60 million isk. Uh, same thing, Stabber Fleet issue settling at 50 million, starts the year at 45 million, and finally Vexor Navy issue settles at 50 million. And so basically uh, for here, what this what this is starting to be a gauge at is that all of these have similar prices and find themselves in similar situations. So we can basically expect the popularity of Faction Warfare PvP to be gauged by the segment rather than... Um, 
who's winning and who is losing in faction warfare itself if there's a lot of pvp a lot of action you should see lots of lp created which should put pressure on these prizes on the other hand uh, right now we're a bit above average it's summertime probably a little bit less activity and then these ships will become more expensive so um i, I like the fact that i basically for me, I mean, this is going to be pretty disappointing for some of you guys that, that know about this <laughs> since they, they uh, introduced the change to how LP is generated in Faction Warfare. Uh, but yeah, this, this does mean that there is a predictability that still exists in this market. You just have to look at it from a different angle and it is uniform across the board. So looking for the best um, buy opportunities is going to be a matter of timing, seeing if there's lots of action in Faction Warfare. All right, try to buy at those bottom prices and and selling will also have a predictable outcome but you can't go uh, single ship anymore you have to look at the entire uh, navy faction segment except probably a stormbringer uh, in order to uh, to do this which right now we're basically in a slightly expensive phase apparently for all of these navy faction ships which is again still relative compared to these pirate faction ships but the opportunities will still exist and uh, i like that I'm, I'm gonna have to keep that in mind and uh, i think i need to revisit these a little bit more often after the summer um, i would expect increased activity lower prices let's see if uh, that does work out or not but i think it makes sense so hopefully we'll be able to make some trades in faction uh navy faction ships once again once this um you know this plays out uh, once we figure out if it plays out the way i expect all right very good uh, i like it some more uh, interesting stuff for me personally there at the tail end that's gonna be it for this eve talk guys thank you very much for watching and as always i'll see you next time